So, as you can see, the little one is looking at all my books. In seven days, we are going to China. And I wonder, therefore, what sort of videos I should actually look for. What videos are good about China? I look at YouTube for inspiration or for seeing what the gaps are, what is happening. And I typically see two kinds of videos about China. They are either the tribal influencer and propaganda pieces, which are all just everything is so great, so amazing. Wow, look at my life. This is just fantastic. And it leaves out any sort of negatives, whatever they are. Or, of course, you have the alternative propaganda pieces, which are all like, everything is bad, the CCP is the worst ever, this is a dictatorship, and forget about it, you should never go there, you can't support it, wah, 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 it's all horrible. As usual, and maybe that's a good niche, the truth is, somewhere in the middle, things can be a bit peculiar, but, well, okay, they are peculiar in a special way with China, not the same as in other countries, especially in the Western developed countries, but China is also a different case and it bears actually looking, it's worth looking at things in a bit more detail. And I guess that's what my videos could be about and should be about, about specific topics and experiences with them, looking a bit deeper, closer and about just travel and other experiences but with a deeper learning behind them, trying to find out why this is interesting and what is interesting about it. We will, of course, go to China in large part because it's a family trip, because we want the kids to see parts of their Chinese family. After all, my wife is Chinese and we want to visit the family and we want to show them something of China. After all, even if they have the Austrian citizenship, they are half more or less Chinese. They are growing up with Chinese as their mother tongue and German as their father's tongue. And in the family, we as a couple, my wife and I speak English usually. And Hannah seems to understand a lot of it, even if she does not speak it actively yet. She's just two and a half years old after all, going on three years. So, yeah, do you need to travel to China? No, definitely not. If you don't want to, if your interests are different. Do you need to know something about China? Yes, I think you should. At the very least, you should concern yourself a bit more with it than just listening to the people who say it's all bad, everything is bad, it's just, I don't know, warmongering with Taiwan and that's the only thing you need to know about it or you should never buy anything from China, it's all just oppressive because that is not what it is. I don't think the people who say that they moved to China because it's the American dream. I just saw a review or a first minute of a video like that. It's like, uh, well, I don't know if the American dream was ever such a big thing in America as that. But as we tend to think, but also China does have its peculiarities, of course. And yes, some in politics, some in cultural respects. But this is just the thing. Of course, there is a time commitment. If you really want to learn something about China, it's not easy. And if your interests are otherwise, then just do something else. Don't. The language is a big issue. My Chinese is still mediocre, no, rather poor. Let's just put it like this. I can understand quite a bit for daily life. But wow, it's a struggle to speak anything to understand more than just the basics. So yeah, that is an issue. It is a time and learning commitment because of the language. The culture is pretty different and there are some things which will be annoying for you, which you will not even want to understand, probably. Sometimes I'm happy I don't speak so much of the language and I don't hear all the comments that my wife and I might get. And I can sometimes play the foreigner card and say, I don't understand and I just want it like this or like that. And please, let's do it my way or I will just get angry. But usually I will try to fit in and be nice and be a representative of the place where I come from and say, well, I want to be polite. I'm a guest in that country when I visit it after all. I mean, that's the meaning of being a visitor. And being an expat would only make that even more of an issue that you need to 
abide by the laws and whatnot. So yeah, I'm not going to, I don't know, uh, what was the thing a long time ago? Fly a drone on Tiananmen and then wonder if the police take you in for questioning. I mean, that's like flying a drone on the mall in Washington, D.C. and wondering why you get shot at probably by the Secret Service if you do that. I mean, come on, hello, that's not really something you can seriously do. But the guy who did it made a nice story out of it, of like, ooh, I had such a strange experience. It's a bit worse than that. I can understand if you have political concerns, and traveling in China is also not easy. At the same time, though, I come on, the same reason of difficulty of time commitment because of the language, because of the cultural differences, also mean that this is something that is very interesting. China is quite different in many respects and there is a lot of learning you have to do because you have to see why you can't abide by some things, why some things strike you as so strange, especially when you're there because you will notice things that are like, what is happening? But it's a learning about the others and about yourself. And if there is something good about traveling, it is that. It is not just being someplace and showing you how great it is, how fascinating it is, and how you are there too. But to learn something more, maybe to change by it. And even if you just watch videos, there should be something in there that is not just the superficial fascination of awesome views and whatnot, of somebody telling you, I have this great experience, but of something where you can learn something from it that maybe challenges you a little to think about it. I have to, and this too is a micro-exploration approach, I have to look back at some videos that I took, at some experiences I had researching for my book, Red Hot China, about the chili pepper and its culture in China. There, for example, there were some experiences with ethnic minorities in China and their cuisines and business they are making. And it was super interesting because it is a bit of a difficult thing because they suffer some discrimination. Somebody there told me about that a bit. And at the same time, they use their cultural differences as a bit of a marketing thing. And so there were some things which were like, oh, this is such a making a show out of uh, traditional culture, out of ethnic practices. It's a bit strange. It feels a bit icky. And at the same time, it was somebody from that ethnic minority who did that, who promoted their culture and their cuisine by that and made money from it. So it's far and away from cultural appropriation. It was a use of their culture, maybe even finding a value in it because there was also an economic value in it whereas in many cases in many places people will just give up on their traditions because they don't matter anymore so much and they are seen as backwards and they may be a hindrance to development and China is actually pretty good in this striking a balance I can't really call it a balance I think but striking some dynamics, having some dynamics between keeping some traditions, having some traditions, but also modernizing. And I will try on this journey we are going on, where we will be in some highly developed places and some places recently developing and seeing some very traditional things and some modern ones and a mixture of all of it all together. I will try to get you some insights into that. I will also look at some of the old videos if I can finally get those online and show you some of those experiences and discuss it a bit more with a bit more of a look at the learning behind it and things behind it which usually go overlooked behind this we are telling you the truth about blah, 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 blah. or there's no truth. It's also fun and nice. Let's see if I can do it well. I'm not sure. But yeah, even if you should follow your interests and if they are not in China, then why not not engage with it? China is super, super important nowadays. And what matters is, yes, also the politics and the economics. If you care about that, it's certainly an issue, but it's related to the culture and the culture is related to the politics and the economics. And they belong together, they need to be looked at together or separately sometimes if that is possible with a bit more of a deeper look, a deeper learning about the other and about ourselves. 
let's see how well I can do it. Let's see if we can learn something. And let's, at the very least, from this video, see that, yeah, you need to see things not just black or white, not just as CCP evil or China so good, but about a balance because every country is like that. The USA are still fascinating and still offer a lot of opportunities and seem to be going towards Trump winning again and how shall I put it, reality not mattering. Like the same people who think that humans are not responsible for climate change now suddenly think that humans control the weather, control the hurricanes. I mean, what the poo, head blown. But I don't know how stupid some, some things out of China could be. And at the same time, I've seen people with Valence, one of my interests, for example, this closing be like, I'm never buying this again now that it is made in China and that Arcturix was bought by Antar and belongs to the Chinese, blah, 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 blah. but actually pff, there's some streetwear developing in China that is interesting. There is running culture developing in China and pushing that culture, that's brought forward quite a bit. Hong Kong is still a bit different and I will be there for an ultra marathon, but I've also done some personal running and some marathons in China and it's really fascinating how it's developing. There's a lot to see, there's a lot to see about other places, but China is just one of my backgrounds, one of my interests. So we will look there and try to learn more in a micro exploration perspective to not just be superficial, but learn about more things we could see more of, we could recognize more and learn more from what we see. And so we see more.